Oh, no, I never heard that. I remember. What's your answer? Yes. And see, media, media. Okay. Uh, I'm from Africa, sir. I come from India, sir. I come from Bahamia. I come from India, sir. Sir, I come from Africa, Bahamia, and Mumbai. I don't know who went to sir. I don't know the local staff that come from India. No, Dr. Babu Bahamia. He has been a pillar for Ghana economy since uh, 2000. He was there before. I'm back home. And I'm the sole. And I want Ghana. I bet only one dollar. But I play a job, you know. And if we lose two or eight, let's say, you know. And this is one by, you know. Or my own house, 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 or my own it will be the foyer to 7.2 to 7.5. And the COVID, and so so, I'm sorry, 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 i am sorry i am sorry i but yeah, yeah, you might need a beer. Yeah, yeah, you might be. So there's no taxes going on. But at the same time, the government or another than Kwakufuado government was even put with for people. So we make some money beer, beer, beer. Any other? But yeah, the coin beer, I'm not sure the any tax. But 202. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, 2022. I put on my hands. Yes, sir. But we're picking on now. Russia, Ukraine, so so, war, so so, as I buy it. Let's see, I want the whole world, economy not struggle. So do you call Europe, inflation, I travel from zero to 45%. But we should go on the air, the team of maintainer, and the other area, the example, I am, I am, Petro, Petro, Koya, 27, but, Dr. Mahmoud Bawumia, I bring in the policy. Ah, gold for oil. I'm a sincere Minoka say from 27 to 11 to 4. So, the whole Africa or the whole uh, West Africa, no? you see, sir, Ghana, you have to be a economy, no? The Sibra, say, no? I'm an economy, no? As I pick it back. That is why I'm an IMF. I follow boy abasu say now no yaya die now no yes I be here see be from zero zero point five now no we are towards in four point five never happened in any economy in the world that is why we have to praise Dr Mahmoud Baumia he has done well Dr Baumia be true now also because both do not be a sentiment them yeah who have a panto yeah who are dying the better account for their shanty reading. But about me, I ain't Sesi asa wone na mkaha Kwa overhead a hudwa ya koso Kwa kwa ya 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 na fufro Sese ya ya kwa ya fufro E free akra tukumase Se ya ni wa Obiye ni wa ubeti miya ye Eti anuti ana wase Free education ni policies a hudwa Na nado da kwa kufu hano diya bado Ya buwa ama na kama mudwa umia ewene Na oloso so ete kiye Tu kwa shasa asene so the same with Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Ghana, we will see light. That is why people like us, we are following him and we have confidence that with Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, Ghana, we will say we have developed. Because all the policies, look at the drones. Just now that the British government has introduced the drones for the... Uh, the yes, for that delivery. But we have done it severely. So his vision. I know me and he have a dream, sir. So his vision. 
Hey, Adia, if we be asking, or do I never hear say? Never be. What you say? Yes. Enti media, media. Okay. Eh, if we talk ourselves, if we are media, we are not saying about media. If we are media, we are saying about media. 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 Moon to me TV in Kumasi. I own Movement TV in Accra. I own Western uh, Diamond in Takrade. I own Billionaires TV in the Western North. I own Northern Ghost TV in Tamale. I can't wait the day all this precious uh, media will call for one-on-one -on -one interview you know with Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and John Dramani Mahama for debate you know the debate for everybody you know to listen to them what you have done and what you want to do it's not about talking you know it's too cheap you know for people to do the propaganda you know we can't wait for them to sit down like this to debate you know so after today we are calling as a chairman of the, the chairman of all the, all this media. I'm calling for debate between Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and John Dramani, and John Dramani Mahama on, for, our on our network for people to see, for people to know. And when they also so you are moving running mates so so and also so you have a from running mates, no. So mumi and nunano almost I'm not debate. I want a gun of Obe Unuse, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, as a dear Nakoko, and in a chair, and yet the Andy supporter. Last year, Dr. Eker Bibi about rent scheme, and they are to say, Sadia nearby, you know, Abuama Sebe over a thousand four ninety. Nina can in Shishanubi, a far Sak Penyanoso, a Yabeti be nephew in the new one. I never want so back here. I brought a young brother, John Germany Mahama or Hono. That's in this world, no school in a doom son of all. John Damani Mahama share a school for you and you catch almost say you better make you doom so free. Why I just say increase your tariff 15 percent or catch almost say I just want to yell electricity and sana or much me and your light. What you say, but Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and then another doctor for Dubai or be student to be an old electricity bill and that's also no. And now I encourage you, sir, who a year secondary school, a year free education, who a year university, so so what the Ghana card is that for the Kokoji student loan, the Fabra. John the money, Mahama, when you are a vice president, I buy a president. I just say, I dear sir, Sans is say away, and you send a new home. No, 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 James chapter 4, verse 11 to 12 now. Or see, it has given to you, it has given to Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to know the mystery, how to rule Ghana. But John Dramani Mahama, it has given to him in Proverbs or mystery, so that he will understand and do it. The time he was a president, he have eyes and ideas and ears, but he can't do it because the God give to him in mystery, you know. But in Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, all these things we have given to him for him to do. That is why now he is doing it. So to me, I'm perplexed about the things Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is doing for the country and the youth. Said yet, when you go to the house, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. And you'll be. And a doctor Mahmoud Baumia said, "This is a yaba say, I am rescued. So who we are so swa? Why we are school so so no? I buy basa and I die the amount. Say I will have said that we get juma. What you have said, you have said that was it. Come on, 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 you have said Western Diamond. Uh, Western Diamond in Takrade. I own Billionaires TV in the Western North. I own Northern Ghost TV in Tamale. Tamale. I can't wait the day 
all this precious uh, media will call for one-on-one -on -one interview, you know, with Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and John Damani Mahama for debates, you know, the debate for everybody, you know, to listen to them, what you have done and what you want to do. It's not about talking, you know, it's too cheap, you know, for people to do the propaganda. You know, we can't wait for them to sit down like this to debate, you know. So after today, we are calling as a chairman of all the, the chairman of all, the, all this media. I'm calling for debate between Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and John Ramani, and John Ramani Mahama on, for, our on our network for people to see, for people to know. And when they also, some of you are running mates in Susua. I know so so you have a from running mate, you know. So mumi and nuni nano. I'm a samra debate. I hold a gun of Obe Unuse. Dr. Mahmoud Bahumia, Esadia Unakoko, and then Achaye. And yet the Andy is a fork. Come on, yeah, that's it. Last year, Dr. Eker Bibi about rent scheme. And they are to say Sadia nearby, you know. Abuama Sebe over a thousand four ninety. Nina can in Shishanubi. A far sack when Yanosono, a Yabeti be nephew in the Numa. So Bakaya, a brother, John Damani Mahama or Hono, Nasa and this Wahono, school in a doom son of all. John Damani Mahama share a school for you and Nimkatra almost say, You better make you doom so few are. I just say increase your tariff fifteen per cent. Or Castro almost say, I just want to yell electricity and sana or Matimania light. What you say? But Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and then another that was before Dubai, the students be able to get electricity bill. And that's also no. And now I encourage you, sir, who are a year secondary school, a year free education, who are a year university, so so on. the Ghana card, sir, for Kona Koko, this student law, the family. John Damani Mahama, when you are a vice president, I'm a president. And to say, I say, say away, and you send a new home. No, 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 they have eyes and ideas and ears, but they can't do it because the God gives to him in mystery, you know. But in Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, all these things we have given to him for him to do. That is why now he is doing it. So to me, I'm perplexed about the things Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is doing for the country and the youth. Sadia, when you go to the car, you can go to the car. 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 What you say to you? I own Moon to Me TV. In Kumase, I own Movement TV in Accra. I own uh, Western, Diamond. Western Diamond in Takrade. I own Billionaires TV in the Western North. I own Northern Ghost TV in Tamale. I can't wait the day all this precious uh, media will call for one-on-one -on -one interview, you know, with Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and John Damani Mahama for the TV in Tamale. I can't wait the devices. I own Moon to Me TV in Kumase. I own Movement TV in Accra. I own uh, Western Diamond in Takrade. I own Billionaires TV in the Western North. I own Northern Ghost TV in Tamale. I can't wait the day all this precious uh, media 
will call for one-on-one -on -one interview, you know, with Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and John Dramani Mahama for debates, you know, the debate for everybody, you know, to listen to them, what you have done and what you want to do. It's not about talking, you know, it's too cheap, you know, for people to do the propaganda. You know, we can't wait for them to sit down like this to debate, you know. So after today, we are calling us. A flu force, a flu force, and the ultimate the flu force, a good bank account, and a bank account, and so to make a good force, is a phone also cry bank account. Me come it through, over many accounts. What is an unsay man so ya take a jadiphobia, or more no more co, and or more no more ba. Sign your money in and the mobile money buy and now crown for the crown of mother. Then tante and tansy. Vice president to say, mm hmm, say a mission level, you know. Mm -hmm. Sir, obey a president, obey your floor. Yes, Vice president to say, mm -hmm. uh, they say, Uko ye mo ba mania, tax ne das no, e le vi no. Oba, obey your yes, floor. Vice president to say, mm -hmm. uh, to a trout will be my bobos, be brave, obey your floor. Na, oh, she shall be brave, oh, and you swadi hunu, be brave, oh, my gana. First, no driver mate, so mate it to make us a driver, I am for her. Now, so not driver, no so I dream. I dream you know. Aha, we su su si emfa, we su 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 si emfa ha. Now, ebe ya no one oku testi ya dia. Eni obe unu baby or the befa. So ti asie. Aha, eno nti eno wa di guigo mamfo ni J. Ni J se ni di eh national service di eno. National service. Eni enche optional. It is off your school mu. Now internship, internship wa ye ye nti when you experience kakra. Si school mo ano ano unya juma ano anza woko nyia fena national service certificate way. Ni akwa kubisa. Akwa kubisa nunti na ame juma no we nyia nyio. Ose. Minister bi kake tuwe bi national service nunti. Inka appointment tomorrow. Ena ose na juni mo find or deba. Wo hiya so be kwa kodi ani mo no be biya. Ani mo no. Young call the worker to do it. Now young call the driver. Yeah, baby, yeah. Eh, now the worker to know what to say. Now young call the driver. Sister, port, 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 port. Sister, you're the first one to and I know my ba. It's the car between our way and way. Oso a ba. Eh, eh. Eh, honey, na you come back to me. I know, I know. You know the next year do programs manager. No, oh, oh. I know, oh, oh. Ah. Na na kuna do. Na na kuna do programs, oh, oh. No, oh, oh. Ah, professor, come no ni adi ni na no mo. No mo ni na, oh, oh. Professor, smart sap mo ni. Ah, no, me, ho, ho. ah, man, come to me. We be a young camper. Yeah, we can't go there. We be a juma. Oza we be a kazem. We say, so we phone the doors. So I ain't in there. They move on. Oh, go. We wait here. Nti ya ya wait here. Nti na ya ya. Vice President, ya muachi. Doctor Alhaj Mahmud Baumia. Ya chiao. Ya chiao. Ya muachi pa. Ya, ya ko do boka teni mo. Ya mani mo so ne kasa. Na fido phone so swabu. Fido. Fido. Oza F I D O. Fido. Na Fido for so mo boy e busia. And na yan person be chere chere won se mu tete ti dia chere kwa bra no obio oh sister so ka me ma ododo. Na so wa man tem. Na sa bra so no akosuma se ni na. Wo wie so as kan wo anya. Enu ti na Fido for se bra. Ni e ma obusia. Si kan ododo obi a wo pe bia ye de be ma wo. De ehia ne se o be download o mo app no so ho. O download a Processing in our whole crowd, the open piano, watch an hour between now and call any. Do call Google Play Store, sir. Now call download the video. F I D O. And one of the four, now call any. And answer all dialogue on my number, no so on. A star nine nine eight, star nine hash, star nine nine eight, star nine hash. Now she said, What apply Fido? Now it's a woe call any musa. Na for ko won't to me a hint asem. Won't to me a hint asem. Won't to me a hint asem. Ye be sie sie fie ye fie ye amasum dwa be fie. Ana tie. So o say ye de ye sie ye yo. Eza say ye see you na nkasa nkasa kra no. Obobobobobobwa. Ye say say be sinei. Enu nti o say 
dwumadie we ye mfa mra mhm ni afa mbe boaze mhm ye afa mbe boat memfuo mhm oba bi ni oba me bia ko mo ho abom emre bebre na so ba ku firi mu no ebusofo o chinchim mansa dwapade ne ye gye firi wo nsem e bia na ode ne ya asase e ye busuan sem de e e bi so wo de ne e ya wariu mu nsem wo anyo bi ne na anta na ye ho 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 a obeti woni na oda asama ade etimi kun depression enu ti ne de sa dwumadie we e ba ye ni a lawyer fo enim de fo mo muni mu de omo mbeti mi etutu fo cycle wa adwen no ama o tebia na wo komo no woni aba ho so na wo se unwu ya Unim ni obenya sanetie o enu ti ni ese bra na be kan ye ho na dwumedie we ye de ba eda kwesi ada bia open wa sori a no aba be so radio no 101.3 fm wo ntimi radio facebook nso so kwa ho no mo a dwumedie we ye de be ba ho no live am wonye bia hwe na onai pepepe ni atena se kwa pema nwumre no num na se tibia bia wo mbia na unya kama fo na unyo bi ne ne nche no wo de fro ye producers na no mo ncha san sem we ni embu ku nto Dumedie no ne ya de wabaso mm -hmm. no aba be kan wa asem ne ya boa wo number na o free producers an opay eh 0247 0247 62 62 46 46 72 72 0247 0247 62 62 46 46 72 72 e ka me ni be ji mo pass an opay e be so ni enya ni pa be de o de o na ni no mo e che o mo hintasem e no ti ni ya to dey say won't me hintasem ye say aba mamu won't me hintasem no age so efa obi a efa obi a we ya kesi esi ye kesi esi ye nka ngu no ye nka nsa e no ye hwete hwete abusu em ye ka ni esi esi ni nyina e de amao afeda wo ka ta wo a be jaso na no pe di ti ni ko si si ni ko tojo na be ti na ba na ko ni na mposo na mposo na mposo na mposo na se de ye ni daade ma wo no ye de odu fi ha ye ye twedi ti ani aka B D. As a chain in Anna say, O B A B D D. Amen. Pech. Chasse. Men chasse. Chasse. And you know, you're going to me today. As an up, we are going to be today the work at an animal. Wrong, sir. Papa and the Doctor had Mahmoud Mahmoud Baumia. Ajima Pemper so. Oh, it's a Santimura and the banner. Aha. And what down? Was one for ministers and one deputies? I'm ready to know what the ministers are. Just a don't be a German or Beno Ketterese. Now, what boy said you about that crow? My gun is sicker. Never be called your pa. And a man penny that that John a Jacum Kufo a Jacufo no. And what say, say, you are here for Nanny now. So I say, I can inform my pa. Yeah, we don't move no. We are say, we are we are say, short. And why na? And why an anti? Mama madi ya say, mam peni ya be di eche doctor lahad mamu ba unya di. Move so move ye. So I say, yentu mo njini ntum, mo njini ntum. Na mam peni ya be di eche mfoni sada ho. Oko oni mse. Doctor mamu ba unya. The man of the moment. Obeba mensia. Ah, no beba. Ana baba sunula baba sunula anopeya oba yebesia ne ho eleven no waso be ye fri ho na abetting tax emrante na ne maba na chasot ya se betting ni ade tax no waso be ye fri en a vat vat ya se vat no vat electricity emission levy ni ade no ha ha ni na so waka wasem ana afa adwuma fo nka bom ku opening Guta, what I say, Ghana Union of Traders Association, a dirty four year woman get the moon. One come come, a penny a woman bab and change a babble to judge. I say, I dear wash a shana, man penny a bed, yet, walk out once a me. I dear dirty four year woman get a hian, a man penny a bed, yet, chuck out once a me. I say, we will be here. So I make young quay, so I'm young coffee for so. Now, my mens was so, I want Ghana times the Bocrat answer some way. Na ano pe Ghanaian times and so so ba ano so ho my photo san for for ko be say Mr White on money for Ken of for real time for ni na da ho ne mu boy na vatia o ma pe ni abedi e che Alhaj Dr Mahmoud Baumia 
Wopenia sisi adia wodina brani. Wonsi shoma azanu wa hamasu wa bobe yefri wano. Sisi adia MPP ya banye tiena supemu ya chese saavate no. Ya suspendi. Isi jidi enu wawu. Ina mungkani ya saafani mu wano mu. Ohamo bu pay edunu 50%. Sisi adia MP ni fwa suspendi ya. Ano pay ewa kratafa e toso mkuno adabra kapebi na kenkani. Na National Identification Authority sisi adi mpeni fomu ya nusu ena omu pietu atu ya mwe snet penalty bi ena sisi adi ya pa kwa ashe se sisi ya no 98,760 ya ebi guso kwa na sisi adi ya are wong National Identification Authority Professor Kinatefa ane na na ni controller ah hey. uh. ena sisi adi ya se so omu fambra sisi adi ya mm. snet penalty na are wong mwa Ado pe ikrata fe to su en wo tre. Ya se penalty ne riwo mu no. Om ko te fre eh NI si ke mu am se da bi. Mo be be mu fi fre am sa ban ko sho. Eh asem o. E ti e no 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 no. Ana ya se ya e ke e me ya ya. Ya ti ni wo wura bi. Adan ya o fojire fojire letters ne ba no a fojire fojire. Na se so de na musa. O fojire ke me letters. Wo fo ko wo husika no 27000 dollars o. And young Corasica. Exist here the Yachin. This are fraud. Yarry Mandan, so on. Mm. And pay a no so so and no no. Na Quasu Cusa Cusa Quasu Jojo National Road Safety Authority in Penny Fons or so. And now Adesia a word than buys or so. Elbo one one who bass or mumble boar, mono, my quantity, poor wood or no. On Bessies is a sad year, bay a passa, Sarquine is so no, and Quasius is here near the no. A super to me at the end of pay. Kata fe to so nkuro so so abo ho amane e manasi mu kuro no ai manasi mu ho no mo no ganian times de wo bo kata ni mo yem fa deligrafe do bo kata en to aso emetie fo na deligrafe ken so bai wo bai ye ni ode bai ye ni na wo che se abaya redraw vat na ode to electricity so no se se de wo de asin chen a o be o be di hu juma san tie se de wo kan na eh ani ase fifi mantem fifi mantem Central Ridge. Central Ridge. Ya say minister, edi ato MMDC is no any much ya say. Womo mo din said ya be ya bato mo asum duye ebe ba. Sot ya say. Sanet say. Ya asum duye ewa my god mo. Dr. Alhaj Mahmoud Baumia. Ajimai. Ajimai Prempe. Prempe ni abedi eche no no. Na ni mfoni da say. Enon se mwa waka ye. Na neni swadi mwa wadi mwa mai gana Eni ya se Ankwa nkwa nyume mu private sector Hey Enyasa mkitwe nyume ebe kosu Ilevi wabe chum Wabe chum wabe chum Wabe chum Wabe chum Ana 2024 elections no Ya se ye reinstate indelible ink no Electoral commission Ana ye tu wamfui Vutu ye parliament Ana ye tu electoral commission For se Wamu fasa adi ya no enye juma Ana fe Se tu mfuo uh, Sir Ajima Pempe the second, the book, mm -hmm. the lunch, yeah, lunch, yeah, lunch, mm. daily graphic, the book, at the above, the 20 minutes, at the first, we are sound, we and as an answer, no, oh. Mami twa so, ewa chronicle, breso, sem, de, obo, krat, animu, ene, ano, pe, ye. Na, obo, mo, fwane, di, ene, nam, e, gu, a, paswe, fina, ban, so, ni, ye, di, so, on, wo, e, te, ne, obo, mpe, ni, abe, di, che, doctor, al, haj, mamut, Baumia, as my prepper, no, no, pay what Jenny Samba said. Emma Dino, no, 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 Sister, Doctor Mahmoud, we are so on your bank. Yes, sister, we send my time a free. We are on the bar of the fifty ministers. And the Bayer Ghana, yeah, it's an open. We try to chew a hassle, yeah. I want some no crack. I need so dear bar. Now, must lock. I want some some. Who says this year the the echoes were up? Whoa! Ah, send the name. Send the name. Tell me, Kulu. Yes, sir. His staff, no matter once is be a pocket. Send the name. Tell me, Kulu. Me come and chill. And this, and this address, and this address. Eh, mm. yeah, you have sent you for the analyze. <laughs> eh, you start from so the end. Eh, so the end. Oh, you may need to get your son there for that. Eh, do you? And the chronicle, but so some day, but that and so, and the boss and some way so so on. I'm a nebi. Young for the league garden, trust me, you fool. And the league garden, so bad no pay. Or buy it, or no so the other buy in the league guide. The league guide, the book that I know, I buy it. No, 
ni awadi ba betu ja eye man pani ba die che dr alhaj mahmud ajman pempe ba o mian de digita man ne di awadi tu ja nu akasa okasa man ga na de hye ho kata fa to so mien sa e na oku che nsa na gu ho e levi o betwam tan efi onom in ton tan aha ana fe no wa se se awadi new flat eh, eh, tax rate eh, regime eba Ohu, ena golden age a chese private sector ebe kwenye ni muno eze minu mionu nye bebiye se bebiye enyuma oh ya bebiye na zene se akwe bebiye bebiye ye bebiye ya fonsu so ni adie osa no shumwa se mbae now ministers ni diya nso wadi ababe tuja ene se outgoing mc on those are listed projects enti katafe tosin siyana mc you know Ozo ba ko de ni 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 projects no wa list e go ni aban nam no so aye ni mpesu aso ni enka obi aye bi sai ye yeah. na atima mu fu ohunu enku ntunyuma akoso e wo wo mpesu aso eno so ya na agenda to reduce uh, cost, cost of living enzo wa hu de ni no e si the daily dispatch the obokrata and i no pay may dispatch dispatch so na ile video ni na wonso wo no mo no e hon so so hia me pop 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 it was so ba o be hwan e de firi ho no mo e no so bia so ho no mo pe na fo ko hwa so me da ho no mo kakra ka e wo so me ma dwini mu ye fine de me ba be ye so ma mpeni me se ma de da do wo ma bo ma let me put da 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 e ti nya fe na me ba na mo be to aba ma me na maga se o mo ye ma kuma so ade ama me ti mo ma me mere kakra na me nko ji ma ho me na e tire ma san so aba be to so se da bi wo nko ha ni mu ba tu ma ne ne e tena ya sha se e nya wade e je tu ato o ye bo djuma gi e djuma ne ade ama no nya wade e ko ye nim sa na tie ana pe e wo krata fa to so mi e no su ohun o e na e yi papa enzo so afra fronto man ala ne so so na zizi ade e wo cho ma pe na da john dramani mahama se 24 hour economy policy no e ya bosa na e ya bosa e na wo se de bo nya ze bi o de ba be ye djuma e no so na wo ho no wo no e na ensam kro no a e na no pe ne se mo sisi suo e na no pe krata ne so chere se ense ma ku ma ku si a e ba be ba e be bo gana be dum gana ama gana mo fo ko mu so ba be dru wo mo no ya listen ni nyina so de gu krata fo a e to so du mi enu e wo the daily dispatch mo any another daily statement so e de bi ba e na no pe na we are the daily statement of boka temo ono so dia wo de ba ni ma mpeni dada ajo na je kumkufo na da ho no ni mfo ni da ho the daily statesman na uye mu a na so mu a wo ka ene se eh ka ta ne che se ma mpeni dada ko fo ayo so no pa se dr mahmud ba uya aha o se se ah se bere ba no no se bere ba no no ni mti ni mfo ni e da ho no e na afi so eh you custodian sentence F L G B T Q plus and then in Kekan Hono. And also and also as a promote a promotion. And also want some at the ha. I know K B Asante. Mm-hmm. I asante I chum this year. K B Asante. They say a ma pano, our yet deputy C U. I wo Ghana Enterprises Agency. Ghana Enterprises Agency. K B Asante. Now what bob your pa and him deal with na uh wabene 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 obe boa obe boa ma me kosi yanki aye ama gana enterprises agency na timi akos nti nyuma nyuma betum pon e se omo se enyuma nko a ankra 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 150000 wow ana wo ma wo mu sika ma odi akwa akwa boa wo nyuma obi o wa na na djuma e wo ye djuma no dada o hie sika e de awuram obi o wa afa no pese o kobie ni shop obi so wa wo ni suade hunu no na oni si ko de be ye enti gana enterprises agency be mo si ka de ma de aye obi so wa ni tool sa o beto o wu eno na adia ma obi so a fe no person ko sua gana enterprises agency be bo wu amu akwa ko sua djuma no na wo hu na djuma na onya nsa na djuma wo eti ma ko nim enti ano enti na cha se do ura ke bi asante o ko bo ma me ni chidom ana ma mpani abe de chi dr alhaj mahmud ba onya so fo ni sada ha biu na aha no wa se eh uh, wo nko 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 di ani mu no ba bia ya my god adi she to abana ma no no o sha se ye djuma na se ma mpeni die die nya wade no akodi ani mu da bi da ah ko di 6 months ani mu na da be wa ba be ye djuma be so my god adi she eh o ko da 
That's a bed, 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 no, bed, you are my age, you man, bed, you are my age, one day, one quest, I didn't know, you are two man, or bed, you are juma, now, what you are, so my gana, and the daily statesman, the bokata, and also one, sem, and what you are, so, man, bed, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, Babes, oh, 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 uh, MPP, KK MPP, and, and I, I wish you happy, 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 happy birthday. Baby. Now go put your damn phone and count. Now I'll go for a trust wall. A Fianna Cunye, a Fianna Cunye, a police station woman organizer, MPP, a walker, a Jusso, a bathroom pissia, so a ne, a yen a birthday. Now I wait, I say, if we ra, Cosi, Chumasi, now John Kuma eight. John Kuma eight constituency. Now, come with your daughter, my boy. Now, we track a clock constituency. John Kuma eight. And I wish you happy, happy, happy birthday. No, and I feel so no. I'm about to be a quadri, Audrey, Audrey, Salom, Esinam. Audrey, Salom, Esinam. Esinam. Aha, Esinam. I wish you happy, 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 happy birthday. Pa, now so Costco and to our mercy. Ah, me nim hodi Antoine Marse. Na okosku I will open mind preparatory. And eh eh your birthday. And to one so you wish you happy 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 birthday to us we. Ana na na we dey dada o. Hmm. Ah, we dey eh dada to wada Roma. Eh ana wa boy eh na ya she. Ana onu abe ya o da so 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 eh Gladys Adey. Mhm. Na and eh, eh, glad this so birthday. Now, way free, and I am your baby, my Louis. Louis, ah, and to Louis, it's a baby, I will be a no. Okay, on my old drink, a pan, young couple, and cosua, and bon, oh, by Emma, a busiano, you know, the baby on one cassette, celebrate you, cake, oh, shake, only a grow cry. It's an anna, young way, any way. And a president can't train so, so Eddie being so abba. Na on your baby, or that's we, eh, a madame Annabella, a eh, wooer. Na or try dear ewo al bila Islamic Basic School. Ah, mm. ewo bo bain asokore mampo e ya. Eti Madam Annabella e ma utirin kwa pa. Na Erica draw one so so ene dasu ono. Ono so so ye juma ewo J aha uh -huh, e N J N L collections. Ah. N J N L collections are ewo asanwasi. Collections are part because you should not team so ni mo see see. Sa sa. O di Valentine no so cry dey. O di Valentine, o di Valentine. Eti an ope onu aban so so ye ma happy 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 birthday. And the other son so so e ye Audrey. Audrey so so ene da so no na we e free yan ye nua ba sister fia. Sister fia ya no wo won miss post. Oh yeah sister fia. Ah so at your mind. Sa 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 na ye nua ye e wo ken ni west e ti an o pay sister fia so say o ma happy 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 birthday i still say sister fia ba no no. Am what in ti wa vicentia. E na e da so no ti ye ma o tri kwa pa vicentia. Na na de ene so e da so do kutwi o ye da da. Sa sa sa. Ti na so sa no pe ye wie no no. Ah da bi wo ni sika o bush. Sika o bush. Na bi e da da. Na na kwa mi we de bo am na. Ye ye hwe ye papa openi Martin Oforiata. Openi Martin Oforiata o no so weekend di nyame aduma. Yo kwa kuja kwa na uh, joy assemblies of God, ma. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 no joy assemblies of God, no a bua kwa makro. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, can a chuma makro. And I feel so no a chuma agogo. So victory assemblies of God, fun yina. Aha, yeni na no beko. Eni adofon ke yina. Yeni aba Bridget. Ha ne papa eni. Bridget papa ni. Eni ti yami aduma. Yabe ko na ya kwa kujja. Ah, bua mai abroma. Aha, if you jack a bre, boy, my abroma, if you jack a bre, and a year be coso, I mean, I do my men in that way, and to a fair so quaso. Aha, boy, my abroma, if you jack a bre, I've a fair so quaso. And Jabacon Yakako Jay and your barn on your mammy. Nah, just a 
ya ja ya papa kwan sa e ye ye koja nkoja anti mi nyame aduma me ndey me ko ho me ho bi ah mo ya nko ya nko nya e ye de ye nkoja nkoja e ye nkoja nkoja ah na foko ya wi o ya wi ya ba be ko e se se fo mfra me o mo fra me ankasa na ye ni ko na wudi jumedie no chia me so mo fra me na ye me ne e ne me ncha wo ha no ha fra me na e ne me ncha wo ha no na ye mo a me so we are from me. Ewo zero two four seven six two four six seven two zero two four seven six two four six seven two. Ewo won't me a hint as a won't to me a hint as a man chow how no, I am wow. Yeah, can you see, sir? Yan can't. Every ten and you can I was for the privileged morning show. So, any one to me radio now, fe one to me TV. Na na ya catch them say, and sacre a cra a bedjumadinum, and sacre a bumunan say, Asantimera, a budja, Yura, Yura budja, na ya some so, and ya some the anatomy so to me multimedia, a five feet, you know, and ya my tearful life. Baby, I'm more, be a wound to me, a medjumadin was it. Ube timi ashe, ube timi eti, ewe un timi radio na afe, un timi TV. Na, chese, eh, onsuwa ukunu sedi ni mesiko. Enti, ya suma hinfi, mm. ene jume diye no, ewe eh, hoa live. Mm. Na sana, ya be fa live feed, you know, ebo na yana eno beba. Onu se symposium no, akoso, ewe wo, Ken UST. Mm. Ha, eno no, ya be chance, ewe eh, video, you know, Edi ya chile tiye fwo, di ya koso, ya wen tumi ya nkwe biye, na wen huni ni ya koso, no. Mm. Ube huni ni ina, no pe ya ndi she se si ya ya be da ya honi akoho ndi abofo ya ya tete ye bebre aha ndi around the world conveys the truest and warmest expression of love and hospitality we say akwaba and because i'm your son you say ya oba akwaba we meet here today on this great day in history for a symposium on the 150th anniversary of the Sagrenti War and the launch of the book, History of the Ashanti, by Otumfo Se Ajiman Prempe II, as the first in the series of many events marking the Silver Jubilee of Otumfo Oseitutu II, the 16th Asantehene, and the current occupant of the Golden Stool. Today, we take pride in welcoming sons and daughters who have come from far and near to add their weight to this glorious celebration. Allow me the privilege of acknowledging, especially amongst us, our guest of honor, a son of a Santiman, MP for Busumche, and the Honorable Minister for Education, the Honorable Dr. Yao Osei Educhum. A Santiman is pleased to welcome her own MP for Minshia South and Minister for Energy, the Honorable Dr. Matthew Opoku Krempe. We receive with great delight the MP for Tano North, the Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, the Honorable Frida Krempe. The Regional Minister joins us in solidarity, the Honorable Simon Osei Mensa. With great joy, we receive the immediate past Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana, His Lordship Justice Kwesi Enin Yeboa. It is with profound joy that we welcome our keynote speaker, now a son of Asantiman, the Professor Tom Makaski. He joins us with his lovely wife, Mrs. Lynn Bryden Makaski. Thank you very much. It will be lost on me not to acknowledge Excellencies, members of the diplomatic community, our MPs, MCs, and DCs, Nananum, and esteemed chiefs and queens from Asantiman and beyond, our religious leaders, the moderators and panelists for this morning's symposium, the Vice Chancellor of the KNUST, Professor Mrs. Rita Akusia Dixon, the Pro Vice Chancellor. Distinguished faculty and staff of the KNUST and other distinguished members of academia who have come from far and near, captains of industry, heads 
teachers, students and pupils of selected schools, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, we say receive the warm and generous hospitality of Asante Man. This historic program is live around the world on Radio Opimsuo Radio, the official mouthpiece of Asante Man, and on Asasi Radio 99.7, on TV, Oyopa TV, and numerous other affiliate platforms, both online and on traditional media. In welcoming us officially to this august event, it's my pleasure to invite the Chairman of the Council of State and the Chair of the Silver Jubilee Planning Committee, Nana Otru Sribo Chabinghine. Honorable Ministers of State, Honorable Immediate Past Chief Justice, Regional Minister, Ananum, Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, my alma mater, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. My duty is to welcome you, and since in a traditional setting, saying welcome means akwaba, I thought that my duty would be done if I just uttered the word akwaba, and I would then resume my seat. But when the two four is around, you cannot be very brief. You have to go to town and say a few more things. So I'll say a few more things, and if there are a few, just pardon me that there are a few. I speak on behalf of the Otum for Osei to the Second Jubilee Planning Committee. This committee has been put together to celebrate the 20 meritorious, momentous years of Otum for's accession to the Golden Stool. By a very happy coincidence, this year, the Silver Jubilee year, also coincides with two seminal events in the annals of Ashanti history. These are the 150 years of the Saganet Wesley War, the Saganti War, as we call it in P, a corruption of the word Saganet Wesley, and also the 100 years of the repatriation of King Nana Prempe the First from Seychelles after 21, 28 years of exile. Now this function is the first of a series of activities to mark the celebrations, the, to commemorate the activities as I have enumerated. Taking them in chronological order, the 6th of February was exactly, today was exactly 150 years ago when British forces under Saganet Wesley invaded Kumasi, looted the palace of precious regalia, and completely burned Kumasi down, and left the town smoldering after their invasion. This morning, we have assembled an array of eminent people who are knowledgeable in the Ashanti in Ashanti history and customs to regale us with the causes of the war, the cause of the war, and Asante after the war. It is instructive to add 
The sense of Tomb Force and Stulement from 25 years ago, the issue of the return of the regalia that was looted by the British has engaged his highest attention and he has never relented in pursuing this mission and has been knocking the doors of the British establishment with a view to getting them to return their regalia. By happy coincidence, the British finally have answered our prayers, albeit in some veiled way that half a loaf they say is better than none. However, some of the regalia which were taken to the US are here and going to be here until time and circumstances shall be no more. So, as I said, the jewel in the crown of the celebration will be first and foremost the return of the regalia from the U U.S. or from America, which will be handed over to Otum for the day after tomorrow on Thursday at the Kutunkudin Deba. And then the return of the regalia at the British Museum and at the British uh, Victoria and Albert Museum on the Akwasida Deba, which is slated for the 12th of May. We hope that if, even if it's a loan, it will be a permanent loan to us. <laughs> As I said earlier, we have two functions this morning. One is a symposium, and the other is the launching of the book on the history of Asante. As you all know, before the written word was introduced into our educational system or into our culture, the mode of transmitting our history, our values, our culture, and our morals and other things was through the spoken word. In the evening, the old men will assemble the young ones and then tell them about the walls of old, our customs, our traditions, their games, and other things. So it was a compulsory for children to attend to these calls. Hence, we call the word titikaasum. It has been corrupted to titikaaso. But it means titikaasum, that is the past resides in the years. However, with the introduction of the written word and calligraphy, the year became less receptive to Tete, and therefore new modes had to be introduced to maintain and retain our history and to transmit it from one generation to the other. We were fortunate to have Otum Force at my Prempe, the second Asante Hene, the first formally educated Asante Hene to ascend the stool in 1931, and through the date of his hard work, was able to restore the Confederacy, which had been, which had been disbanded in 1896, in 1935. Immediately upon ascending the stool, he felt that our modes needed to change. So, whilst our children were going to school, and for that matter, we, they were not getting the tuition that they, they, they deserved and they had to have, he assembled other eminent people, the Asafwajais, the E.K. Uh, CEO says, the I.K. Ajimans, and others, to give our history the benefits of being put down in writing, so as to remove the inconsistencies and the contradictions that attend to transmitting history orally. This was indeed a formidable task which lasted several years. And it is a happy coincidence that he had Professor Tom Maskaski, an eminent son of Asante, who though has a, 
uh, he's been with Ashanti for over 50 years since he came to Ashanti in 1968. Virtually a year passes without his coming down to us and uh, writing about Ashanti and all our histories and everything. And Professor Bakaski has you know, accepted to edit this book. And this is a veritable history of Asante from our own perspectives, without any biases, without any contradictions, and without any enlargements or any diminutions. And the second aspect of the program would be to uh, auction the book. And I'm sure that you have come down with your deep pockets and with your fat checkbooks so as to give the auction the necessary support that it deserves. I'm sure that those, who are, those of you who would buy at the highest price will have autographed uh, copies by Otumfo himself. So as I said earlier, I welcome you. I, said, I think I've said a few things, and if my few is not enough, I think I'll take leave and then give the floor to our eminent uh, MC to continue the program. Thank you all very much for coming, and we hope you will enjoy the proceedings this morning. Thank you very much. His wise and warm words of welcome have set the tone for a long day of reflections, learnings, and insights. Please help me appreciate once again the Drabbing Hene, the Chair of the Council of States, and the Chair of the Silver Jubilee Planning Committee, Nana Otuo Srebo II. It has fallen to a very distinguished son of a sentiment to chair this morning's auspicious event. To introduce him, make welcome the Kwemuhene Achamfo Asafo Boache Ajiman Bunsu. Thank you very much, MC. Your Royal Majesty, between four to the second, Asante Hine. And now to Sribo the second, Yamimai Hine, and chairman of the Utunfo Silver Jubilee Committee. Honorable Minister for Education, Dr. Aseya Waduchum. Honorable Minister for Energy, Matthew Okoku Prempe. Nanan Mama Hine. Nananum distinguished speakers, VC, the press, ladies and gentlemen, I will observe all protocol. It is normal for such an auspicious occasion to have someone who can ably steer the affairs for the day. It therefore gives me a great pleasure to introduce the chairman of the occasion. Our chairman for this August function is a native of Tuasi. He entered the University of Ghana in 1976 to read law and was called to the bar as a barrister in 1981. He worked at the Attorney General's office for his national service. He was a private legal practitioner and was the president of the Eastern Region Bar Association. He was appointed as a High Court judge in 2002 and because of his hard work, he was promoted the Court of Appeal, just a year after that. In 2008, he was appointed as a Supreme Court Judge. He held several positions in the judicial service and other judicial bodies. He was the chairman of the Legal Aid Commission, the chairman 
of the Council for Law Reporting, the Chairman of the Disciplinary Committee of the General Legal Council, and in 2002, he was appointed as the Chief Justice of Ghana. He retired in May 2003, 2023, after 21 years of distinguished career on the bench. Aside being an accomplished legal professional, our chairman is also a football enthusiast. No wonder he was elected as a chairman of the FIFA Disciplinary Committee and also became the first African to be elected to occupy one of the FIFA judicial bodies. He is married with four children. Please join me in with a big applause to welcome our chairman for the occasion in the person of the former Chief Justice, Enim Yeboah. Ladies and gentlemen, your chairman, chairman, your audience. Thank you very much. And now, may Lord Justice, the chair, your audience. Your Royal Majesty, the O2 for Asante Hine, the Honorable Regional Minister, the Honorable Members, uh, sorry, Honorable Ministers of State, the Vice Chancellor, Nananom, Amai Hine, Abrimpong, the Linguist, the Vice Chancellor and the Pro Vice Chancellor, the members of the Academia hearing present, eminent members who are all here as university community. I am indeed honored to be the chairman of this all important occasion. This is an occasion which marks the 150th anniversary of the Sagranti War. Some of us just learned, decided to learn history in person. Unfortunately, we didn't know the inner details of the war, what caused it, and the cause of the war, and as the chairman of the occasion said, the end result for this, our great kingdom. Yes, we are here today to take stock of what happened about 150 years ago. If you look at the brochure, we have assembled eminent speakers who have amassed enough knowledge to share with us. History, they say, must be accurate, free from all distortions. It may be told that in narrating history, there are bitter ones which should not be ignored. There are sweeter ones which we should all swallow. At times, we have to swallow a bitter pill just to cure ourselves. So, my Lord, Nananum, distinguished elders of the Asante I am here to humbly accept the invitation to be the chairman of this great occasion, and I'm grateful to Otun for the Asante Hine and the chairman of the planning committee for giving me this honor at this great and memorable occasion. So, I am here to serve you, and I think you all cooperate and uh, have a fruitful discussion as the history starts to unfold for our consumption. I am grateful and I take this opportunity to thank you once again. Thank you very much. His Lordship Justice Kwesi Enini Abua is our chairperson for this august occasion. Please, a round of applause. We thank you for accepting to chair and we know that your great years of experience, your grace and aplomb will come to bear on today's experience. We now move to the symposium. To introduce our keynote speaker, it's my pleasure to invite 
Otunfo's Hiahine, who is the chair of the Otunfo Foundation, make welcome Nana Professor Ohineba Boache Eji Wahine II. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. The Royal Majesty of Tomb Four said to two the second, Asante Hene, and now to Sribo the second, Chairman of the Jubilee Planning Committee, Mr. Chairman, Chief Justice, and the Honorable Minister of Education, Ya Ose Educhum, Minister of, Minister of Energy, Honorable Matthew Poku Prempe, Doctor. Regional Minister of Ashanti, Vice Chancellor KNUST, Nananum, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, allow me a few minutes to introduce our keynote speaker for this landmark symposium on the Sagrenti War. We have today, to, with our with us today, no other person than the illustrious and prolific historian, Professor Thomas C. Makarski also known as Kwaku Makaski. <laughs> he was trying to get close to Kwakudia, Tune for Kwakudia. Well, Professor Makaski is a professor of Asante History, Center of West African Studies, Birmingham University, United Kingdom, and professor of History of Africa, School of Oriental and African Studies, London University. He retired 2011. He first worked in and on Asante in 1968 at a tender age of 22 and was the youngest faculty member in the history department of the University of Ghana. He spent the whole of his life working, researching, writing, and publishing on Asante. He has written two monographs on Asante, State and Society in Pre-Colonial Asante, and Asante Identities, History and Modernity in an African Village. He has also published over 80 papers on Asante, 50 of which have been republished in his Asante Kingdom of Gold, Essays in the History of African Culture. The history of Asante Kings and the whole country itself. Knowing the importance of research done by the committee that, convened, that was convened by Otunfo Osei Ajeman Prempe II, which started way back in 1939. He singularly edited the final volumes of the typescripts and manuscripts, which culminated in the final publication of this timeless piece we have with us today, History of Asante by Otunfo Nana Osei Ajeman Prempe II. His curriculum vita is replete with anecdotes. And I had a few minutes with him. I asked him, what was your best moments in Kumasi? He served when he served as the royal golf caddy for Prempe II. I believe that's where he got a lot of his notes to. Today, his keynote address is on the Segrenti Wall and its aftermath and reflections. Please join me to welcome our keynote speaker, Professor Kwaku Makaski. Nana Atumfo, Nana Noom, distinguished guests, and the public, I am very honored indeed to make this short presentation about the Sagranti War. I want to start very quickly with a review of the reign of Quaker Du Ajiman, who died in 1867. The reason I am doing this is simple. Quaker Dua Adjaman was the most pernickety and stickler sort of man when it came to 
the law. He is known as Kweko Anansi, Kweko the Wise. He is known as Ajibu Bambuo. He was somebody who really, really enforced the laws of Asante. In the process, he gathered together a great deal of money in gold dust, principally, but also in specie and other things. And I say all this because I want to underline and emphasize something that I think has been overlooked. When Nana Kwikadu Ajibu died in 1867, he left behind a very great deal of money. And I will give you some idea of this. The money was stored in three places. It was stored in the Adakakase, the great chest of the treasury. It was stored in the Asantehini's country palace at Avaraso, and it was stored elsewhere at Breman. The sums involved, I've been able to calculate because we know the dimensions of the Adakakase, and with assistance from members of the British Mint, chemists, engineers, the kind of people who can know about the science of gold and the measurement of gold and all the rest of it, we have calculated that the amount of gold contained in the Adakasi alone at Quigadur's death was in excess of 400,000 ounces. Now, the 4,000, 100,000 ounces in 1867 were worth 1.2 million pounds sterling. But you know what's happened to gold in our lifetime. The contemporary, the current value of the Adaka Kasi is somewhere over two billion pounds. A lot of money. Now he left this money to his successor, Kofi Kakari. And Kofi Kakari was a wastrel. He distributed money to buy popularity and he was eventually destooled at the end of the Segrenti War. I'll come to the war in a moment, but let me simply say that, to underline what I've already said, that the attempt to get back the treasures looted from Kumasi by Sir Gordon Wolseley in 1874 takes no account, because it cannot, of the gold in gold dust and unworked gold that the British must have carried away with them. We don't know about this. Of course we don't know, because it was loot, private loot, and so it is separate from the cultural artifacts that Nana Tumfo is trying to retrieve for the Asante Band and retrieve for the Republic of Ghana. Now the war itself is often referred to generally as a colonial war, one of Britain's first colonial wars. But we can refine that a little. We can refine it, in fact, quite a lot. In the 1860s and 1870s, Britain came to realize that it did not have a first-class army. In fact, it was an army composed of people rather like in the 18th century who had bought their commissions. And this had to change, and change it did, and the leader of this change was Sir Garnet Wolseley. Assisted by the War Secretary, Edward Cardwell, he modernized the army, and of course, this didn't mean just modernizing how it was run. It was modernized from the benefits of the Industrial Revolution. And I will name only a couple of things here. The British came to Asante in 1874 to make war, 1873 to make war, with telegraph communications, with people on board the ships who brought the officers to advise them on what Asante was like. In other words, intelligence gathering on a new and unusual scale. They also had with them, and perhaps most crucially, Snyder rifles. These were the result of revolutionary developments in armaments. 
And unlike the flintlocks used by the Asante or the muskets used by the Asante, these were very accurate, long-range repeating rifles, the first, or at least one of the first, among modern rifles. So they came, and they came with all this in their baggage and their intentions. Now, Wolseley himself was determined to rise to be head of the British Army, which he eventually did. And he brought with him to Asante a group of officers known as the Wolseley Ring, the Ring of Friends, who would rise with him. So there was a very personal motive in Wolseley fighting this war and being seen to have fought it and won it for himself, for Britain, for Queen Victoria and the rest. And we have proof of this. This was the first war in which the general in command, Wolseley, was accompanied by large numbers of the British press. This war was reported very extensively in England, with jubilation, of course, when Kumasi was taken. Now, the Asante themselves, Quakerdua Adjutant, for the 30 years of his reign, had maintained a hands-off policy towards any of the states south of the Pra and the Europeans. There were no real or significant Asante military ventures south of the Pra. from which he did not return until 1924. But the Asante themselves had had enough of this. In 1896, when they took Prempe away, they established a system of direct military informal rule through collaborationist chiefs, people that they had appointed themselves to run the country for them. This only lasted for four years because the Asante themselves, ordinary people led by chiefs as well, fostered, created, and fought a military uprising against the British in 1900. This is commonly known as the Yasaduwako because of the heroic behavior of the Iba, the woman Yasaduwako. That war ended in the ruthless suppression of the Asante. This time there was no offer of perpetual peace, there was no offer of friendship, there was simply the fact that Asante was made a British Crown Colony in 1901, was given a British governor to rule over it in the absence of an Asante Hini, and in the aftermath of the war, large numbers of people convicted of treason against the British Crown by fighting for Asante in that war, were jailed, hanged, or otherwise deported. Now, there's very little else I need to say, except that this is a shameful episode in British history, like most of British colonialism. It is a shameful episode because it was based on industrial bite and a racial ideology. The British were never a great continental military power. They did not have large land armies. What they did have and what they pursued was an overseas empire from which they could extract money through trade, preferential rates, and all the rest of it. And Asante was one of the earliest additions across the world to that particular empire. It's often forgotten, and this is my final remark here, it's often forgotten how short British colonialism was. When I came to Asante, age 22, with Adubwahen in 1968, I met people who had lived all the way through the British period, 
They were born before the British came, and they were there when the British left in 1957. So it is time, finally, to put this episode in the past and to reassert Asante unity under the Asante Hiri and go forward into the future. And I encourage more strongly Asante man to pursue further the matter of the restoration of the treasures that were taken in 1874 and taken in 1896. Thank you very much.
what unites a people is it flags is it army is it gold is it money stories my friends stories and what a story we've heard of betrayal of courage to fight for values and principles defeat and utter humiliation and yet an indomitable will to bounce back and defend nationhood as sentiment and write our own true and unadulterated history what you've just witnessed prof tom is the dance dance a very ancient and popular dance among us the asante which is going ex extinct we re reenacted today in your distinguished honor to thank you for your amazing work which has been a labor of love for us the asante people of whom you now belong to as a father and a brother to you we say yadawasia and sada eja neonia makaski Please, a round of applause. We proceed now in this celebration by acknowledging the causes of the war, the cause of the war, a sentiment after the war, but most importantly, the significance of what this anniversary means to our nation moving on. We're delighted to have eminent men and women who are here in gathered to lend us their thoughts on the way forward make welcome our moderator who will be seated right in the middle a son of a sentiment who is the ellen Ghani professor of history and of african and african-american studies at harvard university a proud fellow of the ghana academy of arts and sciences and a corresponding fellow of the royal historical society uk professor emmanuel achampo Seated with him, make welcome an adjunct lecturer and gender historian affiliated to the Department of History and Political Studies at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology here in Kumasi, Professor Eugenia Anderson. In their distinguished company, From the Department of History and Political Studies at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology is Ghana's first trained social historian of medicine. Make welcome Professor Samuel Edujenfi. With joy, we receive the former research coordinator of the history and politics section of the Institute of African Studies, University of Ghana, Professor Samuel Intewusu. <laughs> and last but certainly not the least, our brother, our father, Professor of Asante History at the Centre of West Africa, <laughs> Birmingham University, UK, Professor Tom McCaskey. <laughs> Prof. The Moderator, you have an hour to deliberate. His Royal Highness, Nana Utumfo Se Tutu Abedu, Nana Drabinkini, Chair of our Silver Jubilee Planning Committee, Nana uh, Honorable Ministers and Parliamentarians, the Vice Chancellor, uh, my academic colleagues uh, since I'm in a, a university, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please allow me to stand on all previous protocols which acknowledged our present dignities. Uh, as Jerry mentioned, my name is Emmanuel Kwekwe Champong. Uh, I'm a professor at Harvard. I will briefly 
give you the context and the format for the symposium and then I'll sit down. So we are looking at the last quarter of a century, so from about 1874 through the Yasantua War of 1900, 1901. Uh, some of my colleagues may share reflections that might go a little uh, forward than that. Uh, we have four speakers. So uh, our first speaker would be Tom McCaskey to provide a big picture. So we are uh, looking at how the Amantini and the Amantua fared in this last quarter of the 19th century. So a big view. And then uh, Samuel Edujem V will come after that and provide a perspective from Kumasi, a cosmopolitan city, a royal city, and the perspective on this last quarter of a century. Then we'll go to Professor Samuel Inteusu, uh, who will look at the missionary factor, both in Sagranti, going through the annexation in 1896, 1900. Uh, after all, it was the taking of the Ramses and Kune, Bodat, keeping them in Kumasi for four years that incited the sentiments that would lead or feed into Sagranti War. It is also important to note that as the 1896 expedition came, they were followed by missionaries. So it is not surprising that some of the earliest photographs we have of the submission of Prempe and his mother are from the archives of the Basel missionaries because they followed the invasion of 1896. Then we'll go to Eugenia Anderson, and I've been enjoying conversations with her these last few days. I've had the pleasure of being associated with two histories uh, by two Asantekini. The first one by Prempe the I uh, when he was in the Seychelles, and then the present one that we will launch by Prempe the Second. In conversations with Eugenia, uh, she challenged me to uh, reflect on what a history of Asante could look like if dictated by an Asante Hima, and what that female perspective of Asante could look like. And I think I'll sit with that for some time to come. Each speaker will have 12 minutes for opening remarks, maximum 15 minutes. Because they are professors, they are welcome to come to the podium to share their opening reflections. I encourage them to look in my direction. So when I do this, you know you have three more minutes. And when I do this, you know you have to stop talking. And since the two four is here, stop talking, you stop talking. <laughs> After they finish, uh, we will open up for Q&A. And I'll ask the audience uh, to ask a question. Let it be a question or a very brief comment. We are creating something called Asantipedia, which will be a popular platform online for individuals and families to deposit stories they have from their families between about 1874 and Premper I first return in 1924. So if you have good stories, that's where it should be so that as many people as possible can ask short questions. So that's the format, and I will now invite Tom McCaskey to start us off. So let us welcome Professor Tom McCaskey. getting tired of looking at me, I think. <laughs> but I've been called back to talk a little about what happened to Asante after the Sagranti War. After the Sagranti War, Kofi Kakari was de because he had presided over the humiliation of Asante. The trouble was that his successor on the Golden Stool was his brother Mansabonsi. Now, Mensa Bonsu was a man of avaricious, greedy, 
and vicious temperament, and is remembered as such today. He had a low whispering voice, and if he could not hear you, or you could not hear him, he would find you, or punish you. He was that sort of person. And in the conditions that followed the Sagrenti War, he was a tyrant, and he is remembered as such. He died at, on the pra Prasu in 1900, and his sons had him disinterred and reburied in Kubasi in 1911, and there was a huge outcry against this happening, but the British allowed it to take place. Well, going back to his reign, he thoroughly alienated almost everybody in Asante, and he began this by invading Jwabin in 1875 to, in his view, bring it to heel. The Jwabin had fled once before, but they fled this time south again to Koforedua, the new Jwabin, and they would not return. And this opened the floodgates. Without that unity, and the Asante, and Asante Hini was respected, and who could impose his will and interpret custom properly, without that, all kinds of conflicts broke out in Asante. Adansi against Bikwai, Mampong against Itueso, etc., etc., etc. And these are covered enormously in Prampi II's book, which you'll be very happy to hear I'm not going to read to you. Um, and he, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and so these conflicts spread throughout the science. This water. When I was introduced, okay, it was mentioned that I had written a book on a Kumasi village between 1850 and 1950. That village is now in Kumasi, it's Adibeba, which belonged to the Manweri school. And in that book, I was able to cite testimonies of people who'd lived through the Civil War of 1883 to 1888 that were collected in the 1940s. And it was a period of intense deprivation. People starved to death. People were homeless. People were refugees. And meanwhile, the warlords, the Amenhini, who had asserted themselves against Mensa Bonsu, descended into a civil war between themselves. The country was in ruins. Kumasi, in the end of the 1880s, was in a terrible condition. An Englishman on his way to Jaman in the Ivory Coast visited it in 1889 and said it was virtually in ruins. It was nothing like it, the way it had been portrayed in the early 19th century by earlier English visitors. And so, Adam and Prempe came to the stool in 1888 amidst these ruins. And he set about repairing the Asante Man, bringing it back together as best he could. And he had some notable successes. An expedition to Incoranza in 1892 brought the Incoranza Hini back into the fold of the Asante Banan's dependence. But of course, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, Adjuman Brampi could do nothing about the British. And so, while he was desperately trying to get the Asante Banan reunited under his authority, the British came, as I mentioned in my first address, the British came to take him away in 1896. Now, in Prempe II's history, there is an account of the debate that he had with his chiefs about what he was going to do. And he said to them, if we fight, we will all be killed and Asante will be ruined. So I will sacrifice myself as the Asante and go as a prisoner with the British so that they will not fight here and they will not make the civil war even worse. So Prempe was taken away with his mother and his father, Bridget Jambibi, 
off to jail in Elmina. And the Asante were not happy about this. They were very unhappy about it indeed. Which is why, as I said, that war broke out in 1900-1901, the Ya Asante Wako. Now, it is very difficult to compress and to tell you in any detail, in fact I can't, nobody could, the events of that period between 1883, between 1875 rather, and 1900 when Bradley was taken away. They are immensely complicated. But certain things need to be noted, even if only briefly. Firstly, Prempe had some notable successes. As I said, in the Carranza and with a number of areas around Kumasi. But he could not stem the tide of disaffection that had been caused by the real sheer anarchy of the war and the brutalities inflicted during it. Not only that, but now, the British deliberately seduced dissident Asante, Asante who were against Prempe, to come south into the Gold Coast colony, as indeed the Joabin had done in 1875, and there they were given both protection and allowed to plot against the Asante Hini Ajibu Prempe. Now, these are a very significant group of people, and the reason is simple. They were the people that the British relied on as collaborators once they had occupied Kumasi again in 1900 and turned into a crown colony in 1901. And these people were placed on the stools, the senior stools, the Abrempog stools and the Amanese stools of those who had been deported ultimately to the Seychelles with Prempe. Now, there's a long and complex history here. You'll be relieved. Again, I'm not going to go into it, but let me simply say this. The first 20 years of British rule are really about getting rid of these collaborators. The Asante people themselves would not put up with these people. People like Kwame Wachi and Agoda, or Kwame Tua and the Jazawa Stool, or the British informant, Kwesi Apia Nuama, Kwame Tua's brother, who was made Achi Amihini by the British. They would not put up with this, and eventually, one way or another, all of these chiefs were removed. But after Premby came back in 1924, of course, the British would not in any way countenance that he become ruler again. That had to wait until 1931, when he was reinstated not as a Sakihini, but as ruler of the Kumasi division, and nothing else. And it took four more years of petitioning, of trying to persuade the British to have the Confederacy restored. Now, I'm going to finish by talking about the Confederacy. The Confederacy that the British restored was restored under the precepts of British custom and British law. The principle was decentralization. They would not, for their own political reasons, accord the authority that Kumati had enjoyed in the pre-colonial period, and they encouraged, if not secession, then forms of independent action by all these armies. And Prampi II spent most of his long reign between 1931 and 1970, when he was not playing golf, so I was carrying his clothes. He spent most of his long, long reign trying to restore the old Asante, the Asante Hini's authority, the Asante Hini's arbitration of custom, and these forms of traditional government back in Asante. And that struggle, I'm going to name no names, but that struggle, as you all know, everybody in this room knows, goes on to this day. I will merely mention, in conclusion, Kumasi. When I first came here in 1968, Kumasi had 100,000 people. Now it's got four and a quarter million people. Where is the land? Well, we know that right now, as I speak, 
land is the biggest issue in humanity. And the Asantehini has to defend the Golden Stool's rights in the land in Kumati, which were taken away by the British and then restored only in part in the 1940s. So, there are still battles to fight here, and I hope there are battles that will be won. Thank you very much. <laughs> Royal Majesty, to four Asante Henenana, or said to two, the Vice Chancellor of KMST, four Vice Chancellor, Ministers, and all here in present, may I stand on the system protocol to proceed. I shall try to sketch my thoughts around the 18th and the 19th century Asante politics. My interest fundamentally would be to focus on Kumasi. One of our sisters, Edwards, who is a PhD candidate uh, from the diaspora, yes. Yes. has done something very significant. And I shall use her point on the setting of Kumasi and the palace prior to 1874. The 19th century cosmopolitan city of the Asantehene in Kumasi was a well built metropolis and economic center covering one mile not to the south and three quarters of a mile in width. The monumental Ahinfi, which is the palace of the Asantehene, was located on a hill in the city center, measuring 1,500,000 square feet and covering 34 acres. The east edge of the imperial residence was the sacred Supreme River. The Supreme River deities and Asantehene's place where you worship Tridiampo. Even to the immediate west, strategically positioned throughout the lush garden landscape of the Asante Hene city, where elaborately Asante designed buildings and residences belonging to royal chiefs and courtiers to the king. The Asante Hene city in the Edum area was not demarcated by walls like the typical imperial cities. The architecture of the noblemen's houses surrounding the residence, the dense forest, and the Subi River formed an invisible defense against invaders. European surveyors and religious and diplomatic visitors were in awe of the west of the of the vast forest landscape and the symbolic, aesthetic, and technical beauty of the structures as they entered the city. However, the position of the Asantehene city and surrounding natural and architectural elements was more than what was visible. The imperial metropolis of the Asantehene was layered with spiritual cultural and security values to the nation. Indeed, Kumase represented the traditional political capital of the forest, the forest state of Asante, as well as the residents of the Asante Hene. The Oyoko royals, all important Kumase office holders and functionaries, were perform I mean stayed there and performed services associated with the Kumasi court and their conjugal families resided in Kumasi. Again, it is significant to note that Kumasi was also the cultural capital. In this capacity, the atmosphere of Kumasi was characterized by elegance or sophistication, sophistication as initially noted. In fact, in 1874, the British led by Sir Gennett Worsley defeated Asante and ransacked Kumasi. The election of Premier the First as Asante Hene, which began 10 years after the Second World War, was marked by civil war and eventual deportation and exile with key Asante leaders in 1896, first to Sierra Leone and finally to the island of May in Seychelles. British attempts to break Asante 
and impose their hegemony on Asante did not end with Prempe's exile. From 1900 to 1901, in the last Asante war of independence against the British, Asante was defeated and placed under the control of the governor of the Gokus. The British then instituted measures and institutions that started the colonization of Kumasi, which they retained as the capital of Asante. May I, as a point of emphasis, say that when you look at the broader community of society of Kumasi, even though we had the Asante Hene with his might and his abilities, the society was equally egalitarian so that you had members of the community from office holders to those who held no office or position. To that extent, we understand that Asante also had different people crisscrossing. In fact, Kumase historically was opened up to Hausa, Mande traders, and different people from different regions and territories prior to the 18th century and to the 19th century. Kumase remained an entry port, so to speak, where different ideas radiated. As a matter of fact, the formation and the founding of Kumase out of Kwaman, where the Asante constitution was fully firmed up, gives us a very clear impression about the fact that the Asante Hine and Kwame Frempon Anoche, or Konfu Anoche, and the eminent chiefs who resided in their specific social and political jurisdiction agreed to that constitution which brought about an Asante Union. An idea that was alien to the European because the European assumed that the Asante Union came about only through war and assumed that the Asante Union could be compared to that, for example, of the European kings or monarchs who might have had their territories or spheres through dent of war. As a matter of fact, this constitution, I dare say, and challenge the discussion, ran parallel to the Magna Carta. In that respect, its authority was so binding in the sacred stool, the Sikiga, that spirituality is that which was also missing in the minds of the European in many respects. Asante from Kumase was interested in diplomacy. And so before even war, there will be diplomatic engagements, there will be discussions, there will be emissaries. And this subsisted since the time of Osei Tutu the first Asante Hene. So the critical question therefore is to ask why didn't the British annex Asante after 1874? Just to jump into other discussions. What had changed on the side of the British by 1800? I know that the chair is looking at me. I, I have more time. Uh, the, the 19th century began with, I mean, the reign of, I mean, Osei Tutu Kwame Isibev. And we understand that there were a lot of interesting dynamics in terms of diplomacy. In fact, his peaceful relations between uh, the British is, is well documented. In fact, Kumasi in this period received three European missions, which included individuals like William Hyde Copper in 1816. Then we have Frederick James, Thomas Edward Bowditch, William Hutchinson, and Henry Tedley in 1817 and Joseph Dupuy, Francis Collins, Benjamin Salmon, and David Mills Graves in 1820. So Kumase was the heart of diplomacy in the territory referred to as Ante and the broader enclaves that it covered. So that is just one example which suffices it right. That these diplomatic missions had one goal, to negotiate for peace, to ensure that there was sometimes an uneasy truce between themselves and their neighbors, including the British. So 19th century diplomacy in Kumase took a rather different form, nature, and approach over a period of time. It was associated with a changing political scene, especially with the growing influence of Europeans at the coast. 
So diplomacy, which is effectively known in the modern sense, which requires that you have a representation in a territory negotiating for peace among other social, economic, and political dynamics subsisted within Asante. In fact, from about the 1760s onwards, Kumasi had brought, I mean, uh, conquest, I mean, and received rent from Christiansburg Castle from the Dutch. But beyond this period, we see that the space between the 1800s, there was negotiations and also there, there, there were ideas of war and diplomacy which subsisted. And, and some of these, I mean, reports have been, I mean, perfectly written and documented by the good uh, professor of erudition, Makaski. Now, now, the peaceful relations between Asante and the British in the first two decades of the century took a different turn. What happened? Why did it take a different turn? Why would Kumase go to war? We know about Asante interest in that holding at Elmina. We also understand that the interest of the British was to ensure that Asante's control or influence or better still hegemony at the coastal regions will be dealt with once and for all. I mean, the question is inter interesting. Why 1874? Why post-1874? And why did the British not annex Asante in 1874? Now, if you look at the account of Ward and Kimberley and the others who have written extensively on that, including Professor Magasti himself, whom I referred to, it's, 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 it's critical to note that it was an expeditious mission. The team with Wesley arrived in the territory referred to as a colony by January, the end of January, came as far as to Asante by the 31st of January. By the 5th, 6th of January, mission accomplished. They returned through Formena, where I come from, signed i mean the treaty was not signed it was a treaty he would even leave because he would not sign the the story that i found therein has already been shared by professor mccaskey now you understand that it was an expeditious mission they returned hurriedly and it did not suggest to us that they were there to stay secondly the terms of the agreement itself or the truth itself or the treaty itself also suggest a very interesting thing because it did not tell us that the British wanted to have an emissary or a resident commissioner in Kumasi and for that matter, Asante. Now, this notwithstanding, I mean, you see a disputation, especially when a Dubuan writes in a later period and argues that the British were interested in supporting Asante. That is why he argues that they will support Adansi Breakaway, they will support the Gabin Quandri, and all the other quandaries that were emerging within the state. In fact, if you, if you shift towards uh, Kimball's argument, th there is a suggestion that the, the, the British had a certain uh, vacillatory approach. They will not get into Kumase and make any intervention, but they will not also come to fight Asante even if Asante was plundering itself. In many respects, it is this civil war which persisted in Asante, plus the challenging leadership of Kakari, among other things, that will lead to the depletion of Asante's resources. Two, you would also find that with the depletion of the resources of Asante, the Asante constitution, which though held together, the social contract which by Asante constitution allowed the state to use a subtle coercion to get members of the state to go to war had waned. Leadership challenge with Kakari, the one who followed after him, and also an internecine war, a civil war, which had eaten into the treasury of Asante. In many respects, some have argued that is what will cause Prempe the first to capitulate. In many respects, I agree in Tutu with my professor with great erudition that through the tact of diplomacy, Premper I would have to save his people from war because 
post-1874 and another war just at 1896 would have been too damning and too dangerous for the health and the power of Asante, especially holding it from Kumasi. I will try to just wrap up. I have one minute. <laughs> so, so, what is my last take on this within one minute? You would appreciate that by 1900, the British had come to town again. They were successful at that because the rallying call for people to come to fight did not have that kind of zest. And that is written by Makaski. Asante will regroup, but we see that even when Asante had been defeated by 1905, resident commissioner Fuller had taken over to behave as if he was an Asante Hene. And even when the real Asante Hene had returned, he made him Kumasi Hene, a creation by the British. The intrigues by the outsiders is what Asante has sought to kill and has found a balancing act to sustain the union till now. I rest my case. Thank you. The second, Nananom keynote speaker, Professor Thomas Makaski, Honorable Ministers, Clergy, Professor Emmanuel Achampon, esteemed and distinguished scholar of Asante history, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great reverence and gratitude that uh, we gather here today to commemorate the indomitable spirit and unwavering dedication of the people of Asante, who played a pivotal role during the British and Asante War of 1874, popularly referred to as the Sagrante War. As we delve into the annals of history, we also uncover stories of courage, of compassion, and sacrifice that resonate with the Asante nation. My role in this symposium is to discuss the missionary factor in the Sagranti War. Many scholars such as Edubuahin, Tom Makaski, Emmanuel Champon, Samuel Pobi, Archbishop Sapon, Ratri, Abel Weeks, and many more have handled this very subject with some level of excellence. I stand on their works to discuss the interests of the Basel missionaries in the war. In the words of Njoku, the colonial enterprise and the Christian missionary enterprise together constitute two of the most important historical events that have for good or bad considerably shaped the history of Africa, including Ghana. Both defining events occurred almost simultaneously the colonial enterprise focused on the economic and political dimensions of life in Africa, redrawing the boundaries, reshaping its political arrangements and structure, and considerably looking at different orientations and vital institutions. The missionary enterprise impacted heavily on the religious and cultural landscape of Africa and considerably tinkered with its dominant worldview and value system. A critical revisiting of these two major events, either separately or as twin events, is crucial and indeed unavoidable for our understanding of the British Ashanti War of 1874, popularly referred to as the Sagranti War. Ashanti and Britain fought several wars. Those battles were called several names, such as the Battle of Nsamankor in 1824, Akatamansu in 1826, Sagranti in 1874, and the Yar Asantua War of 1900 and 1901.
Prior to the Sagranti War, Asante had established itself as a powerful political entity with a strong religious and cultural infrastructure. In spite of its greatness, it still fought more wars. The frequency with which Ashanti battled with her neighbors, including Dentra, Fante, Bono, Eve, Ga, Gonja, Dagomba, and many more, will have drawn attention to itself by several observers, especially the British and some missionaries. British administrators seem to have arrived at the conclusion that Asante indeed was a threat to their colonial project. Historians have indicated that some of the wars that were fought between Britain and Ashanti were in relation to the breach of peace and agreement, and that of 1874 was not an exception. It was born out of the desire to ensure that Asante obeys the peace agreement that it has signed in 1863 not to fight the southern states and also to end enslavement of people. A champion, Albert Wilkes, Tudor, Lewin, and several others have indicated that the Asante British War of 1874 had a kind of crushing military defeat on Asante. Asante got demoralized, and of course, the foundation of its very stay was shaken. Indeed, the awesome military technology of the British led that was de deployed was referred to more or less as a total war. Total war because it characterized the sound that was actually coming from the weapons and rifles that were handled by the British. But the question is that if the Sagranti War was a matter between Britain and British forces and Asante, what triggered the interest of Basel missionaries in the war? A people that were supposed to spread the gospel. To answer this question, we recast our minds to events in early 1868 and again in 1869 when the kingdom of Anglo and Aquamu around the lower Volta declared war on the Eve of Crepe. In the ensuing war, Asante soldiers sacked Crepe towns, including Sokode, Enum, Ho, and took along with them missionaries, including Ramzia and his people, Johannes, Kuhn, Smith, Richard, and Pam, Ramsey's maid. We might begin to wonder why an internal war could lead to the capture of missionaries. One needs to understand actions and events of this nature from the complex relationship that had developed between society, church, and the state. The Christian church in the Gold Coast at that time was lumped with other European agencies such as governments and trading firms. The church could hardly be considered by the people in the Gold Coast as an agency with a separate existence. Such was the obvious conclusion to be drawn from missionaries accompanying soldiers on their campaigns and soldiers accompanying missionaries on their mission journeys. They are perfect examples, for example, of Reese, who was accompanied by a soldier up to a propon from the Danish fort. There's also evidence of free men going to Kumasi accompanied by military officers. As already noted, the first five weeks of captivity of Ranzia and his group saw the captives marching at the daily pace of about 30 miles as they journeyed from Krepi towards Kumasi. This was difficult for European captives who had to walk in the scorching heat from the blazing sun and burning houses. In the process, Ramsey's baby had a fever and cooled a deep wound on his heel from heavy chains. Ramsey's son or child died before the captives got to Kumasi in 1870. Their hope of gaining freedom once they got into Kumasi as they expected was yet to be realized. The detention dragged on for more than four years. In captivity, Ramsey's wife gave birth to a second child. Attempts were made to release the hostages. David Asante of the Basel Mission 
His letter to the captives highlighted aspects of ransoming operations that had taken place. And I quote, twice have we sent messengers to the Ashanti camp offering money for your release, but in vain. I have been sent to Begro on the frontier of our team to try and come into communication with you as up to the present. We have only heard of a report from you. I give the bearer a pencil, paper, and scissors that you may write or send some of your hair as an assurance that you are still alive in Kumasi. With lack of success on the part of the Basel Christian Mission, the British Colonial Administration for Gold Coast, who now had responsibility for Prepi, took charge to secure the release of the captives. One of the first decisions taken was Britain to secure, to take possession of her sentry captives on the Gold Coast, including Bofo. I have some water. Bofo's nephew, whom British officials retrieved from Krobo in 1869. The plot, it seemed, was to swap captives for the Europeans in Kumasi. Hence, in June 1870, the British governor of Cape Coast, John Popo Hensley, released and sent to Kumasi a batch of Asante prisoners seized in a previous Asante war around Achim, with a promise to free more of Asante captives upon the release of missionaries. That was also not successful. At another time, he sent Asantehine a gold embroidered silk worth about 100 pounds. That also did not help matters. Instead, the demand was for 100 ounces of gold or about 1,440 pounds for each captive that was being held in Kumasi. To fast forward to 1872, Karkare sent the captives to Formina south of Asante on the River Pride. And a message to the British administrator was that 1,000 should be paid to Asante agents in Cape Coast by captive so as to seal off the deal. A week later, the captives reached Formina, but before leaving Kumasi, the missionaries had redeemed their two African helpers, that is Palmer and his wife Coco, by paying six programs drawn on the Basel mission account. As the European captives journeyed to the coast, a British force, force read, headed in the opposite direction of the Asante army. The two armies clashed in 1874. The British forces seized the captives and led them as freedmen to Kumasi, uh, to Cape Coast. It is important to highlight at this stage that the missionary factor played a very significant role in the 1874 war. The capture of the missionaries and the ensuing negotiations allowed the British to plan both in terms of personnel and logistics to be able to launch an attack. Also, the frequent correspondences and spy work and the movement of missionaries such as David Asante enabled enough intelligence reports to be gathered on Asante and his forces. Apart from this direct contribution to the war, there were equally important insights that are worthy of note as far as the involvement of missionaries is concerned. The support of missionaries for the war was simply to prov provide them with a clear form and a direct or indirect way for stability and order in the missionary enterprise in Asante. In Asante. Since the frequent wars between Asante and the people of the coast proved to be unduly disruptive and even explosive for missionary work, it became evident that after the war, some missionaries such as Ramsia had some guaranteed territory for them to be able to carry out their conversion works. The interest of missionaries in the war was also due to the intimate relationship between the formal end of the transatlantic slave trade and the beginning of the Christian missionary enterprise in the Gold Coast. Even though slavery had been abolished by the British in several of their evangelisms, they had come across evidence of existence of slavery in most parts of the Gold Coast, including Asante. 
Missionaries embark on campaigns to end slavery by arguing that slaves demand mercy and compassion. In their mission to Ashanti, Saganan Wolseley and his band of fighters projected the war inside grand eloquence so as to gain some sympathy and support from missionaries within the Gold Coast and also outside of the country. These were actually people that were already exposed to a number of abolitionist proposals. Rather than trade in human beings, humanity will profit more in trading in commodities they added. For the missionaries giving support to the war, it was more or less an obligation for them to be able to pass on Christian faith to Asante. For the missionaries, the defeat of Asante was construed and seen as a kind of remedy for the slave trade and a civilizing mission. This mindset will be put into action immediately after the war, where Basel missionaries converted ex-slaves, some of whom volunteered to be agents of the pro propagation of the Christian message and values in the dominions of Asante. The interests of missionaries could further be viewed from the perspective of social, religious, and cultural health.